Hey there, hope you're doing well. The Trader Smith here with another repair video. Today we're going to be changing the hub drum assembly and brake assembly on a 7K electric axle. Uh, this one is worn out and I'm going to show you how to replace it with all new parts. Okay, we're going to cover the tools that we'll need for this job. We'll use our channel locks again, small hammer, side cutters, small chisel. You can use a ratchet with a 9 16th socket, or if you have a small impact, that will work um, as well. So let's get this thing torn apart and replaced with some new parts and get it in new condition. All right, let's pop the dust cap off. And I don't reuse dust caps, remember? Dust caps are cheap. We're gonna take the nut retainer off. That's all an old dust cap is good for, is to keep up with our parts. We'll take the washer. Outer bearing. And now we will remove our drum. So like I said, we're going to put a new drum, a new brake assembly, but in case this brake assembly was still okay and the drum was okay and it just needed some maintenance on it, I'm gonna quickly show you how to do that. And then we will. you can go back to our other video um, on bearing pack that will show you how to do that procedure. But on the brake lining on the shoe here, if there's plenty of pad, this one's been burnt. If there's plenty of pad, you can clean that up. You can use some coarse sandpaper. You can do it by hand, or if you have an orbital sander, you can do that as well. You just want to get all the glazing. You really need to wear a dust mask. I'm not wearing one so I can talk. And I'm going to back the camera out just a little bit. I'm going to spray some brake clean on there. That will also cut the dust down. And then we'll blow that off and I'll show you this little section is going to clean up pretty good, but the rest of it's bad. So we'll bring the camera back in. You can see a comparison from there to down here. It will clean up if you get the glazing off. And then on the drum, I'll step down here. We'll do the same thing. The magnet where it rides here, you would need to clean that up it again by hand and then the surface where the shoe rides and like I said if you have an orbital sander air sander it make it a lot quicker you can clean that up spray that off then you could reassemble this follow our bearing pack procedure and then our brake adjustment procedure and you could put this back together but this was too far gone so we're gonna replace it with new parts um, so let's get those parts out and let's get them on so the first thing we'll do is remove these five nuts that hold the backing plate on. All right, now that we've got all the nuts removed, we'll remove the whole backing plate. Um, <clears throat> on your trailer, you'll have two wires out back. You'll need to cut the connector on those so you can take it off from the axle. Again, we are not going to salvage this brake assembly because it's just, it's too charred. The magnet's worn out, the drum is worn out. Uh, so we're gonna replace it with new. So we'll pull that off. And then we're gonna clean this spindle up. And also nasty grease off of it. And this one does have some dirt and some a little bit of corrosion on the seal surface. I'm just gonna take some real fine emery cloth. Because if that dirt gets in the new seal, it will just eat it up. And I even like to clean, even though this is on the exterior, I just like to clean it up if you're already here. Some brake clean. Try not 
Try not to splatter too much. All right, now that we got the spindle cleaned up, we have checked all of our threads on the studs on the brake flange. We have our brake assembly here. We're gonna go ahead and install that. This brake assembly comes with some new nuts, which is good. And when we install these, we're gonna tighten them down in a criss cross pattern, just kind of like torquing a wheel down. One thing that's very important on this brake assembly, it rides on a small flange back here. Just make sure it's setting on there square and it's not crooked. Because if it is crooked, it will tighten up, but it will come loose with time and it can cause a failure. So we're gonna get some grease and wipe on our spindle. We are lucky enough today to have a pre-packed hub drum assembly. So we don't have to pack our bearings. That's already done for us. Makes it nice. So we'll open this up. So one thing you need to do, <clears throat> it looks clean, but it is not. So we're gonna stick that in there. Then we're gonna take some brake cleaner. I'm gonna try not to splatter the camera. And we're gonna clean this because it's gonna have a thin coating of oil to keep it from rusting. We need all that off because if that gets on our brakes, they are not going to work properly. So again, when it comes to cleaning all this stuff, don't shortcut it, take your time. Looks good, we're gonna blow it out with a little air to dry it off. Okay, now that we got that dried off, we need to pop our outer bearing out. And then we will install it. That's on, put your outer bearing in place. Make sure it goes all the way down. Pack that grease in there best you can. Now we're ready to put the washer and the nut and the retainer. I'm gonna clean those up a little bit. All right, let's put the washer in place. Get the spindle nut on. And the proper way to tighten this nut is gonna be tightened counterclockwise. We're gonna spin the drum counterclockwise. As we tighten the nut, we want to bottom the nut all the way out. So 
So once it's bottomed out and tight, do not move the drum again. We're gonna back it off a full turn. We're gonna tighten it down, bottom out one more time. And then we're gonna back it off quarter, three eighths of a turn. And that will set the proper lash on the bearing. Um, neglecting to do this step here will cause the bearing to prematurely wear out. It's super important. On this retainer ring, if it looks bent or if it's rusted, pick your new retaining ring up at your part supply. It does not come with one. The ring is not very expensive, but that's all that holds the nut on there. So it's very important. Now we'll wipe the grease out of here. So we can put our grease cap on. We'll spray a little brake clean. That way I can show you the trick to not losing grease caps, but they're lost all the time. Make sure you get that good and clean. Looks good. You can use a little blue Loctite on your cap. This hub assembly actually comes with two different caps. Um, one for easy lube, which this is not an easy lube, it's a standard grease setup, so we're gonna use the solid cap. Just put you a little Loctite on there. Doesn't take a whole lot. I just like to smear it around with a glove on. And then we'll take our chisel and our hammer and we'll slowly walk this cap on there. Like I said in another video, they do make a tool to do this, but I think everybody needs to know how to do it the old fashioned way. We'll make sure that that's bottomed out and seated in. Okay, we have the new drum installed. Um, some of you may notice this is a six lug drum and we took an eight lug off. I'm actually repurposing this axle for a different setup that's gonna use a different tire and wheel. Many people think that once you're done with this, you're done, you're not. You need to adjust the brakes. Um, we will link our brake adjusting video so you can go and check that out. And also on this, you have to burnish the brakes in. We're gonna make a video that goes in depth on how to burnish your brakes, but one way to do that after you've done your first adjustment on here, that you can go back and look at our brake adjusting video, hook this up to your tow vehicle, um, get a place where you can drive 20, 25 miles an hour without impeding traffic, and you wanna run your controller up seven, eight, you wanna have it pretty hot, and just using your brake controller in about 10 second burst, send some brake back to these, do that 10 or 12 times, um, that will help the burnish process begin. That'll make it a little quicker. It takes about 200 miles to burnish the brakes in. After that 200 miles, you need to go back and do a secondary brake adjustment. Failure to do that, you're just not gonna have good braking. And in the beginning, these brakes are not going to work. Um, just like when you buy a new trader, you have to burnish in new trader brakes and you also have to do adjustment on them. That's why they don't work in the beginning. So. Again, if you're gonna reuse your drum and your brake assembly, remember to clean your brake assembly well on your drum. Go back and watch our bearing pack video once you've cleaned your drum, and we'll link that here as well um, so you can reinstall all of your existing parts. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it gives you some better braking on the road, um, and I hope it saves you some money down the road. We'll see you soon. Don't forget, if you have any comments, please share those with us below. We love getting comments. If you have any ideas for videos that you'd like to see repair, please share that with us as well. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. We'll see you soon.